Okay, guys. I've been kind of starting and stopping all day long on the projects because I'm, <laughs> I'm having one of those days. It's very strange. The wind has stopped. The rain has stopped. We have blue sky with a few fluffy clouds. And you would think that, you know, the birds would be singing and all would be well. So here is the thing. I do not have enough batting to make the quilted advent calendar. So I'm going to use some old pillowcases. It isn't batting, but it is actually they're not cases they're old 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 um, pillow shams that I bought I'm gonna guess it was over 20 years ago and we don't use these the comforter that went with this set has long been repurposed into 15 different other projects but what I like about these is I can stitch right here to close up the opening where you would insert the pillow they're lightweight, so it's not going to put a lot of weight on the advent calendar, which will be hanging. Um, and it's going to be hanging from uh, a certain type of hook. They've not arrived yet. Today is November 16th of 2021, and I think they're due tomorrow, the 17th, Wednesday. Uh, but in any case, I didn't want those to be... I didn't want the advent calendar to be so heavy that it pulled down from those little hooks. Because, I mean, let's face it, it's going to have the advent calendar, the pockets, the goodies in the pockets, and then these little wooden numbers. They don't weigh anything, but when you add it all up, there is some weight to this little box. So... I'm going to fix these two so that I can use them as my batting. The other option that I thought about was finding an inexpensive baby quilt because it would be the right size and then just stitching the front of my fabric to the back of the baby quilt. But I've decided not to do that. I don't want to purchase something. I want to repurpose what I have. So I'm going to clean up and then when I come back, we're going to start on that project. Okay, so don't let this fool you. I am cleaning the room. But I did want to do something, and I have thought about this off and on so many times. It will help me so much in the long run. I'm going to use this thread for the project, so I'm just going to go ahead and set it over there on top of George. You'll notice that I have some paper, and this is actually sold as wrapping paper on... Amazon and it comes in a roll like this and it'll have individual pieces or it will have different pieces of paper and they are um, reversible and I have I don't know how many different collections of this it's just one of my faves all right I have an empty turmeric inflammation response mega food plastic container and I have pens and pencils scattered everywhere so I'm going to turn this into a just kind of a rustic rudimentary pencil cup thing
I'm pleased with my little pencil holder and I can put the paper that I didn't use back in my closet over there. Okay. So if you decide that you have pillow shams or pillow cases in your linen closet that you don't use or don't need anymore and would like to repurpose them, they do make good fillers. All right, my dears, so here's the thing. I need to measure. Let's just see, I'll use this. That's 23, let me slide it to the end and I'll just use this. All right, so this is 23 right here, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So it's 29 inches this way, and it is, wow, 23 exactly. There's that. So let's just see. Yep, that's about what I figured it would be lengthwise. So I can give you an actual measurement now. The interior filling that I'm using is 20, what did I say it was? 23, 24. So this is 24 inches wide. And then this measurement is, let's do it like this. Okay, there's 24. 48, 49, so it's 49 inches long. So you got 24 across the top, 49 across the bottom. That's to start out. Because this is not including any seam allowances at all. I haven't I haven't begun to do that seasoning part of the recipe yet. Okay. All right. So now I need to warm up my iron. I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with some starch and let it be sitting and absorbing the way that I do. And I'm also going to do the same thing to my Santa fabric. Alrighty, so I have my gorgeous Santa fabric has been pressed. I love that they all sat with the starch on them. They feel like paper now. I do have a couple spots that I didn't hit, but I will be sewing. I'm not going to be too concerned about the um, the wrinkles until the final press. I'm going to just attach this fabric right sides together. I want to make sure that when I flip this to the right side that it will be correctly placed and it looks like it will be, yep. All right, so I'm just gonna seam right here. And I'm not gonna change my thread. I don't think this thread here will be um, visible. It's, it's just going to be a seam. I'm not too concerned about the color. I am gonna pin because it's a lot of fabric and I don't want it to slip and slide while I'm trying to sew. As I'm stitching, I'll be pulling these pins out before I reach them. I don't want to sew over. Oh, 
get these threads out. I don't want to sew over any pins and I don't want to give my sewing machine oh, any reason to end up in the shop during the holidays. That would be awful. Now you're going to notice that the Santa fabric is one selvage width wider than the candy cane fabric, and that's okay in this case. I'm going to be trimming and squaring up and, and making things fit anyway. But I am going to lock it because I don't want it to come unstitched at any point. So what I have is four layers. So I have the two on this side and the two on this side. I'm just gonna line those up and I can cut through four with my pinking shears. I can't go through eight or any other number. So I'm just going to smooth this down and trim. So if I open this up, you will see that I have my Santa fabric has been attached to the candy cane fabric and it's going to be a top border. So on both sides, that's the other piece of this. So this is going to be half on each side, front and back. But I also have to do the bottom or I have to double how much of the candy cane fabric I want at the top and then it becomes a, a huge part of the pocket design. That's possible. I can do that if I want to. So, well, so in other words, I want to remind you guys just so you know, I have a tiny sewing space. That's why these things happen. Okay, so in other words, I could either have a little bit of, of pocket, or excuse me, a little bit of a top border, you know, like this many inches, say five inches, at the top and at the bottom, or I could have 10 inches at the top. I kind of feel like I want an even division between the top and the bottom. So what I have to do is, this is 49 inches long. So I need to cut this so that with the additional fabric, I have the same amount. I will be sewing from this side and I am going to make myself a large note with my friction ink that I need to leave, I'm going to say about this much, stop or start, yeah that would be a start, so here would be 
Well, actually, I'll be coming along, coming along, stop. Yeah. So this is actually a coming along, coming along. Good old friction ink. <laughs> Start. Okay. So this right here will remain open. A lot of times when you are working on a larger project like this, by the time you get to here, your mind is wandering. And your mind is wandering. And you pick back up and you sew. And your mind is wandering. And your mind is wandering. And when you get done, you think to yourself, well, that's great. I've just sewn three things together. Wrong side out. I have to pick some stitches. Ugh. So... <laughs> If you don't want to have that happen, I have found the smaller projects I typically don't forget. The big ones, if I don't make myself a big note like this, I might just keep stitching. But I will stop if I see this. It'll be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Back to reality. Okay, so once again, I'm not worried about the thread color because it'll all be on the inside. I'm going to preserve my blue thread right here for the quilting stitches that will be visible. All right, there we go. Cut these threads. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it. I may end up having to turn it back wrong side out again, but I wanna see what it looks like. I wanna make sure everything looks like it's supposed to look before I start doing any major work on it. Okay, so this would be, you know, batting, if that's what you chose to use. I'm using repurposed pillow shams. And I'm going to, you want to make sure that you're going into the fabric that you want on the outside and not batting and the wrong side of a piece of fabric. So it should look like this. And, and then take my point turner and now this is only possible if you have left enough yeah left enough of the opening that you can get your hand and you know part of your arm down into the project if you're doing it the way I'm doing it. So there we go. Okay, so this apparently this is the back and this is the front. Oh, hard to God, they are really strong. They're hard to squatch open. Oh, there we go. Okay. And, yeah, they're really... This is good quality. At least of these types of project products. I've never purchased these before. I've seen them, but I've never purchased them. I'm kind of thinking maybe three across the top. And they would have to be evenly spaced, but it'll easily hold this plus whatever the pockets weigh and whatever I put in the pockets. Unless, of course, <laughs> I'm putting ridiculously heavy but small items in these pockets, which <laughs> we can assume that's not going to be the case. Okay, so the next thing to do now is to press it, get it pretty well evened out and then I will draw some quilt lines. Oh, they're just so cute. And stitch across on the quilt lines. I'm going to use my sewing machine. I love the way this turned out. So far, I get this even. And I can decide which of these I want to be the front and which I want to be the back. So if you want to look at it and kind of determine 
based on you know how your your um, like this right here is one of the sides and if I flip this over then this becomes the other side and one of the two sides will be attached to the um, the interior fabric it will be you can you'll be able to feel it more attached in my case it's managed to attach itself to this side and by it I mean the inside the wadding the batting the extra fabric whatever you chose to use but I think I'm going to use this one I like the way this looks on the front I love all roads lead home for Christmas is here I mean it's the same print on both sides but this just seems to have lined up in a little bit cuter fashion on this side and I love it and as you can see this down here at the bottom it just folds itself in you can press it if you want to and then make sure it's even and then just I'm gonna slip stitch it because I'm not planning to do a stitch all the way around since I will be doing a quilting design do next is press this because I have all my um, heat erase ink visible on one side. I also have to make 24 pockets so that's my next part of this project. Let me go ahead and grab that fabric. Okay. I could swap them out and do that but for some reason I like this better. Okay, so these have been cut off of very heavily starched fabric that is, it literally feels like it has a, some type of stabilizer attached to it, <clears throat> but it doesn't. <laughs> so here's the thing, I'm going to start by just zigzagging along these edges, and that's all I'm going to do to this. I might be not visualizing this correctly in my head. I might not be. But that's what I'm going to do. If I attach this and then fold under, I will only have to fold it under once to stitch here and here along the edge of the pocket. So my only visible outside stitching would be along here and I'm just going to do zigzags all down those edges. They're going to be almost like a rolling whip but just a real close you know tight zigzag. So I'm going to go ahead and do this at 1.5 length and one width and we'll see what that looks like. I need to make sure first that my sewing needle will pass without hitting my the edges of my foot. I don't want to break my needle doing this. So I'm carefully checking. Okay. Hmm, it needs to be a little bit wider, so let me get the needle back up. I think we'll go with a two, and we're going to see what that does. Perfect. Okay, so here we go. So I like the way this looks. I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing... I'll show you, I'm just gonna like clothesline stitch all of these and then I'll show you what they look like at the end. Okay, so here they all are with their little zigzagged roughly edges. Okay, and I would sew the buttons on now but I am gonna be moving them around under the sewing machine while I do pockets. Okay, so 
have the fabrics all ready to take care of. These little kerchiefs are ready to attach. This is ready to cut and this has been pressed. I love the way this looks and of course, duh, I was thinking to myself, I could hang this up before Christmas because one side is just this pretty quilted wall hanging, you know, with candy canes at the top, or not if I fold them under. I mean, I could just do that. Or I could hang it all the way up with this at the top and the candy canes at the bottom. And then on December 1st, turn it around and it's an advent calendar. So it's kind of a little multi-purpose idea. Okay. pockets that we need to finish and I want to see I've got to get them all turned around the right direction of course I think I did count them correctly it just feels like maybe eight more pieces than what I actually need all right we're gonna go with one we are simply going to fold. I'm not even going to zigzag. So I don't really have the thread to do the zigzag stitch. So I'm going to set it back to my default settings and use just the thread I have. Um, I may have to get more for a second wind on the bobbin. If I do that, I'll probably just use white. pocket with our little um, flap and they'll be attached so that there's a l enough room to put something down in there. Now I'm on. All right, so I'll do that all over again since I didn't have the camera on. So to create this, which essentially looks like this. So here we have this. We're taking a five by five square of fabric that we cut. So it's five inches on all sides. This is the same as our five by five, but it's this angle right here. And then the two ends are cut off at an inch on each side. So it's seven inches across. We're going to remove two inches, so we get this, which equals five with the point right in the middle of our square. Then we're going to fold under on the wrong side approximately a half an inch of, so both of them. So the floral and the candy cane fabric are folded down like so a half inch, and we're stitching it. Just like that. Now I'm chain stitching. I'll show you what I mean. I have, I think, 14. So nine more to go, and it's just a simple matter. Right side up, right side up. Fold to the wrong side, 
approximately a half of an inch and then just stitch it down. All right, so I'm gonna finish these and I'll be right back. So now I have all of the uh, 23, because I've already done one, basically completed um, across the top. So the next step is to trim the thread that's holding these together. Okay, so the next step is to do the same, basically just chain stitch through. So I'm going to fold in one side like so and stitch. Okay guys, so there's a couple things that I want to point out that you might not have thought of. When you have stitched down this side over here, your little triangle thingy is going to look, that's a technical term by the way, thingy, it's going to look like it's off center, but that's because you haven't folded the other side down. So once you get that side down, then your little kerchief, pocket kerchief or whatever the heck the, we're going to call these, um, will be in the middle. The other thing is, and I really hope you will try this, if your fabric is heavily starched, it makes a cotton fabric act like paper. It just folds just like a piece of paper would. So this fabric has been treated that way. And all I have to do is just fold it and press it down. And it literally acts just like a piece of paper. Not kidding which makes it so much easier to do a project like this. Now, another thing you might be thinking is, why on earth is she finishing off all four edges on these pockets when she's going to be stitching them down on the um, backing, the, the little hanging piece? And the reason for that is, number one, I didn't want a whole bunch of these little guys hanging out fraying and waiting for me to get to it. I wanted them finished up and ready to go. I'm going to be putting them down, like I said, randomly. I'm going to put these on before I attach it to the wall hanging. And I didn't want these to be exposed and fraying. So, also, I think it'll be easier to stitch them down once they are a little pocket. It'll make it much easier. I'm trying to decide if I want to put a little pleat in the bottom when I'm sewing them on or not. I'll let you know when I get to that point. So that's why they're finished this way, which is a non-traditional pocket, um, clearly. That's okay though. We're fine with that. And the other thing I wanted to mention was if you don't want to do this, there's two things you can do. Number one, you can buy a baby quilt and you can put mittens. You could just get like a red baby quilt and white mittens and pin 24 mittens to the baby quilt. Tra-la-la advent calendar. Um, the other thing you could do is make it out of paper. So if you prefer working with paper then you could do a whole advent calendar out of gorgeous paper. Okay I'll be back in a minute. Okay so it's a brand new day. I haven't done any more on this, but I plan to. In fact, we're probably gonna finish getting this put together today. All right, so all of the other sides, except for this one right here, which I was using as my example, so I'll go ahead and take care of this one too. And that will mean all 24 are stitched along both of the sides. And then we're going to do the exact same thing that we've done with this chain stitching. And we're going to stitch across the bottom of each pocket. Alright, 
back to this. So now comes the sewing by hand part for me, but it's really just a single stitch. Get these all out of here. It's amazing how much 24 things looks like. You know, when you think, um, I just don't know, it's just weird to me. Okay, so I have seven, and I don't have to worry about the, um, the order, because on my advent calendar, they're never in numerical order, they're just all over the place. Okay, so my numbers are not correct. I'm missing a one and I have two sixes. So I'm going to attempt to turn this into a number one. I don't know if that's possible. That'll work. Okay, so I have 20 and 23 left. I know they're out of order, but it's weird how that worked out. If I'm not mistaken, I did have one side that I wanted to use as pocket side and then the other side I wanted to use as wall hanging. So that if I do want to put this up before December, I, I can certainly use it as a wall hanging. And then once December 1st hits, just turn it around. So that would be this side because I have a few wrinkles in here. All right, so remember what I said about not having these in order. I am going to just mix them up. But how pretty are they on this backdrop? The blue is just gorgeous. I love it. All right, so the first row has been stitched. Okay, so I have decided based on just the difficulty in navigating the open arm of my sewing machine with even just this small amount of fabric, because it's quilted, it's bulky and difficult to get through there. I have scratched myself and poked myself and hurt myself with the pins enough that I have decided, although it looks nice on the top row that they're stitched, you know, I have four nicely stitched pockets. 